One of the greatest mistakes that so many Christians can make is they can fall into the trap of thinking that God is punishing them because of the way that their circumstances are. They think that because everything's falling apart and things are so bad and nothing's getting better, that it must be because of the way they're living. It must be because they're living far from God or they're struggling with sin or God is displeased with them and they make this connection between their works and their performance and their circumstances. And I think it's very easy to do because if we look at things in the world, we see that if usually if we treat people well, they treat us well. If we treat them poorly, they treat us poorly. And then we can project that onto God. I think also people are so focused on their circumstances that they seem, tend to analyze and see everything through that lens. They have this expectation that, well, things should be good, things shouldn't be this way. So therefore it must be because I'm doing something wrong and God is punishing me. But I think there's a few mistakes here to unpack. First of all, God doesn't promise that everything's going to go well for us. In fact, he promises that in this life there will be tribulations. So when things aren't working out well for us as Christians, it's not necessarily because of the way we're living, but it can be a result of living in this fallen world where things are broken and even the consequences of other people's sinful actions can cause suffering for us. And we need to have this right expectation or we're going to be disappointed. We're going to think it's a strange thing when, when, when life is hard and overwhelming. But that's what it's like in this world quite often. Also, we see a lot of prosperity preachers out there um, that say that, you know, God wants you to be prosperous in holistically in all areas of your life, in your marriage, in your finances, in your health, in all of these things. And that even that these things are promised in the cross of Jesus Christ which isn't true. God does want to bless us in these areas a lot of the times. Um, we will have those blessings in those areas, but a lot of the times we won't as well, no matter how well and faithfully we live for God. They're not guaranteed. They're not promised. We need to have this true expectation. Look at the life of the disciples. If that's what Christianity was about, receiving all of these blessings in all of these areas and having everything go well for us, then they were doing things really poorly. You look at Paul, he despaired of his life. He was uh, sick, he was in poverty, he was going through a number of things at different stages. But he was a faithful man of God. I love the way that God actually treats us. He says that in Romans 5, 8, that God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That he, This is an image of how God treats us, that even though we, we sin, we fall short, he knows how much we failed him and continue to fail him. He chose to die for us. And we don't even understand how sinful we are. We don't even see the darkness of our own heart like God does. And he still chose to die for us. That shows how he treats us. I love in Psalm 103, it says, He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. He's not sitting there waiting for you to fail and going, Gotcha, now I'm going to throw this circumstance upon you. That's not how he works. He says that um, as far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. When we come before him and repent, they're forgotten, they're gone, they're cast into the deepest sea. That's how he deals with us. And we don't want to have this conception of um, how my circumstances are reflects the love of God for me or what God is thinking of me. No, the cross of Christ defines that. And that's what you want to hold on to at all times, to, to know who God is because of what he says in his word, not because of your circumstances couple of things to finish off a lot of people you can see in the bible in the psalms in other parts of the bible righteous people crying out going why do the unrighteous prosper there are many times when those who are far from god when those who are opposing god prosper temporarily in this life it's not always about there's no connection that you know if, if you if you live for god he's going to give you the best circumstances sometimes people live so far from god and everything goes right for them in terms of temporal circumstances sometimes people live so close to god and everything goes wrong in, in terms of how we would want temporal circumstances to go so you can see that the, the connection that we can make in our heads about god is punishing us it is is very misleading and lastly what i would say is that God can allow circumstances to come upon us. He doesn't bring these circumstances upon us, but he does allow them to come upon us in this fallen world, in this broken world. The Bible promises that will be tribulations. In this world, you will have tribulations, but take heart, I've overcome the world. 
that's the expectation we need to have or we're going to be disappointed that when calamity comes we're going to think something is terribly wrong and then we're going to blame God or we're going to think that well God is punishing me because I'm not good enough I'm not living up to the standard and oftentimes when God allows these things to come upon us he can discipline us through these means but it's as a loving father it's as a loving father to wake us up and to draw us back to him but it doesn't mean that every time that something's going bad in our life, it's because of this either. So we just want to be very careful. We don't want to overanalyze things too much. And the best thing that we can do is to just focus on who God is, regardless of whether things are good or bad in our circumstances, and just to know that my focus should be on loving God, on drawing closer to God, on living faithfully to God, and just leave the rest in His hands. And, and know that that's what you're called to do. And whether your circumstances go well or whether they go badly for you in terms of a temporal sense, you can have full confidence that you're living the way God wants you to and you can have full confidence that God loves you because of what he did on the cross for you, not because of the way your circumstances are. So don't draw this false connection and don't have this false expectation. God doesn't promise, any, promise us anything in this life other than his presence and a cross and we need to bear it as faithfully as possible. Yes, he will bless us in many ways and we have many blessings in our life, but the things that we have don't correlate to the love of God. What correlates to the love of God is what he did on that cross. So don't allow your circumstances to think that God is punishing you or condemning you when you may well actually be living faithfully and your circumstances are simply a result of living in this fallen world and they're the perfect opportunity, an opportunity that you may not want, that is painful, but the perfect opportunity to live in faith for God and just trust Him that He will make your path straight, that will lead you closer to knowing Him, to becoming more like Jesus and that even that He will turn around some of those things in your life that you're going through. Leave your comments. I'd love to hear from you uh, what stood out in this message. If you like this uh, video and you want to see more, subscribe, hit the bell to receive notifications, and I'll talk to you soon. God bless you, friends.